phenylethylamine, also known as the molecule of love, is a small amino acid in the family of biogenic amines, not technically an amino acid. It is produced naturally by the brain. It potentiates the neurotransmission of norepinephrine and dopamine. So we know the importance of dopamine, but a lot of people don't know as much the importance of phenylethylamine in the expression of pleasure, joy, contentment. In studies that were done in rats, for example, when you put an electrode in a region called the medial forebrain bundle, and if this electrode is connected to a pedal and then the rat is allowed to just tap on the pedal and it gives an electrical discharge into that area which releases norepinephrine in the brain, then the animal will actually die of exhaustion, will not eat, will not drink, will simply press on that pedal. So that is the impact of norepinephrine in the brain. And there is a molecule that we make ourselves in the brain anytime we feel content. So you do something that you really enjoy, you're happy, your brain is making the molecule of love phenylethylamine. Phenylethylamine, or PEA, has been well documented in its role in affective behavior. So everything pertaining to how you feel, your mood, your ability to be content. If you are deficient in PEA, which can be measured in the urine by one of its metabolite, phenylacetic acid, you measure it in the urine, it gives you a good indication of how much the brain is making. And it's very interesting to see that a low level of phenylacetic acid has been associated with depression in adults and attention deficit disorder in children. Now, if you take phenylethylamine PEA in a certain amount, so it's more than 10 milligram, with a molecule that blocks the enzyme that breaks down phenylethylamine in the brain, essentially monoamine oxi oxidase. So if you block that enzyme and you you prolong the life of phenylethylamine PEA in the brain, then you can, with something as little as 10 milligram, actually reverse or significantly improve depression in people that have been diagnosed because of that. Ethylamine PEA, a drug has been developed which is a derivative of PEA, which makes PEA not as susceptible to be degraded by this enzyme monoamine oxidase, MAO. And the enzyme, the, the drug is Wellbutrin. Wellbutrin is a derivative derivative of PEA, and it's a drug that is very well known, has been used widely for depression. What is interesting with Wellbutrin is that when the drug industry started, to, or doctors started to prescribe Wellbutrin, many people using it did not experience what other antidepressants have oftentimes been associated with it, which is weight gain, a form of apathy. That was not seen with phenylethylamine. People just feel joyous and there was no weight gain. Well, it was discovered that PEA also, by providing contentment, then basically helps remove a lot of addiction, cigarette addiction, and also to food. So people can lose weight more easily and many people can stop smoking. So there's another drug that was developed, the exact same drug, Wellbutrin, called Zyban, which is used to help people stop smoking. So this is the story of P. I'm giving all this background because I want to make sure that you understand that we're talking about a molecule that has been very well studied, not talked about a lot, but very well studied and very, very well known to be at the center of the brain's ability to generate and you to experience contentment, mood elevation, just feeling good. When you take PEA, it's experienced as a sensation of mental energy. In the afternoon, when normally you have a little bit of a down energy, you need a cup of coffee. Well, oftentimes PEA gives you that, that sort of pick-me-up energy where you feel better. Once described to me her experience of PEA, and I think it's right on. She said, at the end of the day, after the day's work and I'm ready to go to bed, I put the kids to, to bed and normally I'm exhausted. I just want to go and hit the pillow. And she says, and now what I want to do is just sit down, open a book and just read. So there is still energy at the end of the day to need to do something. This is exactly what PEA does. It's not energy like caffeine, it's energy like being content. So you're biting into life and you're interested into doing other things. So, PEA is found, interestingly, as a molecule that comes from the degradation of some amino acid. You will find the highest concentration in roadkills. 
Obviously, roadkill as a source of PA is not very palatable. So in nature itself, as an extract from plants, it's not a very common molecule. You find it a little bit in chocolate and cacao. You find it a little bit in roses. And it turns out that one of the greatest source of PEA in nature is blue-green algae from Klamath Lake. So this blue-green algae from Klamath Lake, known as Aphanisomenomphlos aqua, abbreviated AFA, has been used as a dietary supplement for Hmm, I would say since probably the mid-1970s, really hit the marketplace in the early 1980s. And I joined that industry to study AFA in 1995. And at the time, my job was to do the studies to document the mechanism of action of this blue-green algae, AFA, and also the bioactive molecules in that product. So my starting point was to look at what everybody was talking about, like what kind of experience were people having when consuming AFA to have an understanding what part of the human body was affected. And there were three main benefits. Number one, an increase in immunity. Many people would say, well, I used to have colds every year. I used to have various kinds of problems associated with the immune system, allergies, asthma, those kinds of things. And people would say, now that I'm taking this product, I don't have these issues anymore. And we identified that it was associated to a large extent to a polysaccharide NAFA that stimulates the activity and the migration of NK cell, which is the part of the immune system that is responsible to essentially patrol your body and find cells that have been infected by virus. So virally infected cells are eliminated by NK cells in the body. It's one of the things that this polysaccharide was doing that altogether created very much of a, a biomodulation of your immune system by keeping it calm when not needed, but allowing it to kick into action whenever needed. A very, very nice effect of this polysaccharide in AFA. We also identified phycocyanin, which is the blue pigment in the blue-green algae, which is found in AFA because it is a blue-green algae. People consuming AFA were reporting great benefits on inflammation. So joint pain, inflammation in general, and it was all associated with this molecule, phycocyanin, which has been well documented to be a COX-2 inhibitor. You may remember a number of years ago, we had Vioxx and Celebrex on the marketplace. They were pulled out on the marketplace because if you completely inhibit COX-2, it was revealed that it can create problems on the heart. So people started to consume Vioxx and Celebrex, a number of them started starting to experience cardiac problems. Well, it turns out that phycocyanin is also a blocker of COX-2, but it, its effect is limited to about 50% inhibition. And at that level, none of the side effects that have been seen with these drugs is experienced, but the benefit of blocking COX-2 is fully experienced. So it is a selective COX-2 inhibitor. So it's associated again with an effect on inflammation and pain. The most interesting benefit, at least for this discussion today, is that many people, I would say probably 50% of the people consuming AFA were reporting benefits on mental clarity, mood elevation, what I described before, just feeling better in the afternoon, still having energy at the end of the day. Oftentimes people experiencing some level of depression would, would feel much better. We've had stories many times of people who said they were able to let go of their antidepressants. I don't recommend this. Make sure that if you start to take AFA and, and you feel that you do feel better and you want to do this, you do this in coordination and supervision with your physician. People were experiencing these benefits and we did identify that AFA was an exceptional source of PEA. So, and it has all the science that I described to you before. My big question though at the time was how can it be that, because we know that PEA has a very, very short life in the brain, something like a minute. So if you don't have a blocker of the enzymes that degrades PEA, consuming a product that contains PEA should really not give you a whole lot of a benefit or an increase in this experience of mental energy, mental clarity. But people reporting these benefits meant that there had to be a blocker of this enzyme monoamine oxidase in the product. This was revealed a little bit later by Ajdan, by a group, they were colleagues at the time in Italy, that identified an amino acid that has mycosporin-like benefits and they act as a blocker of monoamine oxidase. 
Now, if you combine blue-green algae, AFA, with seabuckthorn berry, seabuckthorn berry also has an inhibitor of amine oxidase. So by combining these two together, you get a much greater effect than if you take just AFA or just seabuckthorn alone, because seabuckthorn also has been documented to reduce anxiety and have an overall mood elevation. There's a very nice synergy here by blending these two plants together. So that is essentially the story about around PEAs. We have seen over the years many benefits with children. There was even a product, this is maybe 15, 20 years ago, a product marketed in Europe. It was called kids.com. And over time, some regulations were passed that these kinds of products could not be marketed to children to a large extent, I would say to a very large extent. And it's not a conspiracy theory. We know what happened in the background. It was basically Novartis that was selling Ritalin in, in Europe that basically made a lot of pressure to be able to stop the distribution of this product on the marketplace because it was working very well with kids that had ADD. So we have seen that many, many times. Anyway, so AFA contains PEA. So you take AFA, if you take it blended with seabuckthorn berry, we have this in stem regen, then it gives this synergy here. So you can take it for Valentine's Day. Of course, you can take it every time. It gives you the benefit, for example, when people take stem regen, one of the things that we hear oftentimes is that, yes, of course, there's an effect on stem cells. You put more stem cells in circulation. These stem cells will go and repair the sort of a neurotransmitter effect that you feel in terms of mental clarity, a sense of of energy, a sense of contentment, it comes from that blend between blue green algae extract and seabuckthorn berry extract. So that's what it is for this week on phenylethylamine, this amazing molecule in AFA.